coming up on Facebook Live shortly. Blondie for us this morning. Blondie and Rapture this morning. Drop off line sports is brought to you by Bobcat of Indy. Thank you guys for that. Now, surely you did not stay up for the entirety of the game last night, did you? It was pretty bad. It was pretty bad. I was trying to think. Before I actually dial this thing up, Heath Harper, good morning. Christopher, good morning. About um, exactly what was the main focus of last night? Um, because really, the entirety of the team looked similar to that of preseason game one in Seattle, with the exception of Luck was out there for the first time in forever and um, you know looked better in the short passing game in that game. Luck didn't look good last night. I don't think there's any doubt about it. Uh, rest of the team didn't look very good either. That's why when I tell you this is going to be, an, or if when I tell you you should be satisfied, happy, have a parade, if this team were to win eight games this year, nights like last night is kind of why I point to that. Because it's tough to really figure out how in the world this team, like a lot of people are saying, 10, 11, 12 wins, will have any attempt whatsoever to grind out that many wins. I, I hope so, and I hope I'm absolutely wrong. I just don't know how that's going to happen. Chad, good morning. Ryan, good morning. After the first quarter, better call Saul, baby. Brian Crow, good morning. I'm not, I, don't, I don't know. I think I'm going to be right about that, and I'm certainly not rooting against it. I hope that they do. I hope that they outkick their coverage, too. Um, and Heath Harper's right. I mean, it is preseason. It's hard to tell anything. But it looked extra special discombobulated last night. And it looks like a team that, if the quarterback doesn't have a good game, has no chance at all in winning. And we've kind of been down that path before. So, I mean, that's why Chris Ballard has said all along, I mean, the expectation is this is a rebuild. Uh, but everybody gets excited about the start of the season. I don't think there's any doubt about that. Uh, no receivers. Line will be better, but will be running for his life, waiting for someone to get open. You know, and that's part of the thing. The last, you know, Andrew Luck throughout the beginning of his career, you know, that's that's one thing you never mentioned when everybody, like Booger McFarlane was talking about holding on to the ball too long and all this. That's, that's the type of offense he's used to because that's what that offense was predicated on. That's Rick Venturi. I mean, you're running down the field. Um, and you never had that type of pr protection, and you didn't have guys that were really able to get open that well, and that leads to quarterback hits. I mean, that's just kind of the way that it's been for him. And um, that's why you hope this offense that Reich and that Sirianni has implemented here is going to help his game then help the longevity in this game. Now, the one thing I will question about Andrew Luck overall, uh, the one thing that I am going to question, I and I've said this before, I don't know if you're ever – going to get him away from making those types of plays that he made on the interception. You know what I mean? Like, it's been preached and preached, and you know that he stands in the mirror and does the same thing. Just throw the ball away. Three is better than zero. Throw the ball away. And he never has, and I don't know if he's ever gonna. And I can kind of see him in that situation. There's no excuse. I mean, it was a bad throw, and it got picked off, and he cost his team three. But you're thinking, I need to get this team into the end zone. Frank Reich said before the game, he was talking to Matt Taylor on the radio network, and he said, you know, one of the things I really want to see tonight, I want to see us put the ball into the end zone. So you can see what he's thinking. The funny thing about that play where he was picked off, guys, both receivers, both intended receivers, it was Doyle and I think it was Christine Michael, right, on the sideline. They were both already out of bounds. Michael had stepped out of bounds on whatever route he was running, and uh, Jack Doyle was actually standing out of bounds when, uh, when Luck lobbed the ball down there. So it was, I mean, you kind of get where he's going with it. And certainly he has to be better. I don't know if that forcing aspect is something that you're ever going to get um, completely out of Andrew Luck. I just I don't. I just think that's – he just wants to put it in the end zone. He wants to make the play, and that's kind of where he is. I might be wrong. Hopefully I am wrong on that. But I don't know if that's ever anything you're going to get out of him. 
Rich Carr, good morning. Chris Jackson, good morning to you guys. Travis writes this, Colts lack serious playmakers on offense. This is a little scary head into the season. That is very true. Kurt, good morning. Scott Yaney says, Suggs untouched and bearing down on luck was a scary sight. It was. How do you not at least bump him? Well, Doyle bumped him during the snap, and I, I'm assuming was handing him off to Raven Clark. And LaRaven Clark didn't even get up out of the damn stance until Suggs was by him. That is absolute. Left tackle is scary, my brother. So is right tackle, too. Both tackles are scary. Michael says, hi, from Emporia, Kansas. Will Purdue football improve this year? I don't know if they're going to be. If their defense is surprisingly good, yes. If their defense is surprisingly good, yes. Lost a lot on defense. But I think, I think they can. I think they can. Bill Gora, hi from Chicago, Bill, good morning. Seltzer says Vinny is still a beast, he absolutely is. Ryan says the Vinatieri kick, though, was pretty awesome. J Mac, uh, something I can't, J Mac, JC Mac. No receivers, line will be better, but we'll be running for his life, exactly right. Kurt, good morning to you. Jeff Seltzer says six and 10. I just say this, that if this team grinds out eight wins, everybody should be happy about it because that's kind of what you're dealing with. I mean, it's not going to change that drastically. And even though I point back to March and I wanted Chris Ballard to do more and get a vet, more, even more veteran wide receiver presence and you know, do a little bit more at the running back uh, and not overspend and not go overboard, I don't know how drastically that would have helped. It would just give Luck more people to trust, I think. I mean, you can tell that he and Ryan Grant have zero connection right now. Um, you know, he, he and Ebron, I mean, Ebron, when Luck exits the game, Ebron starts catching 19,000 balls, right? Um, still, it's it's still Luck. Still, Luck is focusing in on those that he trusts. And it was out without T.Y. Hilton. I mean, it's just Jack Doyle, Jack Doyle, Jack Doyle, Jack Doyle, right? And in a couple of Chester Rogers direction. Scott Smith says five wins. Seth Weaver says four and 12. Uh, Heath, Heath Harper says the Colts need Daz. The problem that you have right now at wide receiver, guys, and at running back, too, is there's just nobody available. And maybe somebody does spring forward and become available before the start of the season after a cut. But this is something that, that they really should have addressed and that I talked about back in March. And, you know, you don't go out there and spend a lot of money. I just You bring in a veteran that fits. And you bring in a guy that is okay out there just trying to help. I mean, you, you don't have to break the bank, and you don't have to bring somebody in there that you're afraid is going to damage you know, your locker room moving forward. There are ways around that. And just to be steadfast and not even look at it to me or to just singularly look at it with you know Ryan Grant just didn't make a great deal of sense to me. Um, and it still doesn't make a great deal of sense to me. Um, but I think right now they're just kind of in a pattern where, you know, you're not going to find anybody. You're not going to find anybody any better out there right now. So, I mean, I'm, I'm not, I'm not for a Des Bryant, and I'm not for a Jeremy Macklin. And beyond that, there's just really nobody out there. Just nobody but can't meet right now. So you're kind of, you're kind of living with what that is. They, they should have. He should have done something a little bit more back in March. Tyler, good morning. Jim, good morning to you. Any more questions from last night? Um, yeah, Luck did have a bad performance. Talked about that after the game. Kind of an interesting conversation he had, especially about the Suggs hit where Suggs got to him from the blind side and how he got that out of the way. You know, we talked about that initial game, Bobby Wagner's hit on him, but, you know, he felt that that hit on him was uh, one that kind of made him feel better about the game. Uh, Scott Yady says Chester Rogers acting like a pro bowler every time he made an average play. He got separation and still sucks yet doesn't really. He got no separation. I agree. I mean, they're not getting any of that. And see, that was a bigger problem. And we'll see how much this offense does help him because the bigger problem in, in what was the Chudzinski or the Pep Hamilton offense, um, and it worked with maybe the better, the best line luck has had might have been his rookie season with Samson Satelle and Winston Justice at right tackle and Costanzo and Mike McGlynn. That might have been arguably his best line as a rookie. Um, and you know, it gave him a little bit more time. And certainly he was more of a, a runner. Certainly he hadn't been dinged up to the degree in which he has been dinged up right now. But over the Grigson and Pagano era, 
they always went with these these deep drops and relying on guys to get open down the field. Well, guys didn't get open down the field, and then consequently your offensive line can't protect at all, and that's just a bad combination. That's a bad combination they lived with for years with Luck, and the only time they didn't live with it, the only time they really changed it up was when Luck was out and Hasselbeck came in, if you remember, about three years ago. That was the only time they ever changed it up because I remember asking the question, why don't they try to implement this style of play for Luck considering no separation of wide receiver and considering the offensive line not being able to protect and they never did that. So I, my hope is for Luck that he feels more comfortable and gets more comfortable with this offense being a quick hit as opposed to dropping back and waiting for guys to get open. And we know this, guys. We've seen it forever. These guys just aren't going to get open. They're just not. Uh, Walt Frazier says, I'm not the only one that noticed the change in play calling once the Colts change quarterbacks. There's something to that, too. They are not opening up the playbook very much for luck, I don't think. I, and I mean, it's just it's more concentrated for luck during the time when he's in there. And then, look, I mean, Brissett's running around everywhere. Brissett, Brissett looks more like old luck than luck. You know what I mean? Brissett looks like the old luck, like running around everywhere and making plays. And I, Yeah, it does look different, Walt. I agree with you on that. Good morning, Jay. Drop Offline Sports brought to you by Bobcat of Indy. Uh, Heath Bartlett says, who wins the AFC South, Houston or Jacksonville? Um, I would say right now, I would still say Jacksonville has the overwhelming talent to win it. I almost, I don't know if I'm a believer in Vrabel, but I would kind of look out a little bit for Tennessee this year. Look out for Tennessee, maybe even more so than Houston in year number one after that injury to Deshaun Watson. Uh, Corey Hall says the old line still needs help. I don't think there's any doubt about that, my man. I don't think there's any doubt about it. Uh, the tackles are pretty bad without Costanzo in there, and uh, that showed that again last night. Um, anything else? Got a full discussion coming up for you later on today uh, at 3 o'clock. Rick Venturi is going to join us at 5. And uh, we've talked we've talked already about some stuff from last night. The scary aspect of this, the ones so far in two preseason games don't look good against the ones of the other team. I mean, the ones of Russell Wilson in Seattle, he owned the defensive ones of the Colts. and The, the ones aren't looking good against the ones. That's an issue. Jeff Les, good morning to you. Heath Harper says Bortles is a wild card. He is. I think their behavior and their attitude is the wild card. I think their behavior and attitude, you know, like all this Jalen Ramsey stuff um, and Dante Fowler Jr., I think that's more of a wild card than Bortles is, to be honest with you. You like this heat? Chicago Street Player Remix. The bucket hats, the bomb. Exactly. That's a good call, Heath Bartlett, right there. Good call. This is an often forgotten but incredibly entertaining song. Not this, but Chicago Street Player. Very good forgotten Chicago song right there. Good morning, Lisa. Good morning. Uh Exactly. I mean, this Chicago song's kind of forgotten. But the Bucketheads in 95 brought it back as a dance club remix called The Bomb. Street player. That's a good one. All right. Drop off white sports. Brought to you by Bob Catavendi. Rick Venturi later on today. Greg Graystraw had the post game show. We'll talk to Greg about it too. Um, anything else you guys want to hit before I go here about last night? Um, I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing here. I think it's almost a good thing that you have a quick turnaround and have a Saturday afternoon game against San Francisco. I think it's almost a good thing, honestly. For the Colts, for luck. Aww. Is this from the Robin Hood soundtrack right here? I think, was this playing last week when I was on? Brian Adams, everything I do, I do for you. Look into my eyes. I can't do with that. I can't deal with that. Three dog night. All right, let's see what else we got working here. Beat mix? No. Don't, don't cry. The cure. Boys, 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 boys. <laughs> and then, 
da, 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 da. All right, got to go. Drop off Light Sports every morning. I, I, I've been struggling getting Laney in here because of school, so we're going to try try our hardest. I just can't I can't promise anything. I'm going to try to squeeze her on here tomorrow. It's just been kind of tough. Long December, the Counting Crows here, huh? Hello. Good morning, Colleen. I'm tired after the game last night. A lot of people are. Yeah. Quick thing. Congratulations to Matt Taylor last night. Matt Taylor did a great job on the radio network. A friend of mine, former producer of mine, which uh, I think is pretty awesome. On the network last night, if you listen to any of it, Matt Taylor, a fantastic job. Well done, Matt. Uh-oh. I can't go if Jerry Rafferty's going to be playing. I can't. Let's all sing along here. You're trying. You're trying. This is a damn good song right here. Hey, can I make an argument that this is the best song of the 70s? What's the best song of the 70s? This one right here? You're gonna turn up this, the saxophone. Ryan Hickle, good morning. This might be the best song of the 70s right here. Good morning, Jennifer. Monarch Maintenance. I got gotcha. you. I don't know, Heath. Hotel California. Baker Street's pretty damn good. Look at me keeping time here. We down the street, there's a lion's place. I hit the wrong button. Sorry about that. <laughs> Drop off flight sports. Got to run here. You guys have been great as always. Rick McCherry, 5 o'clock. Must listen. I promise you later on today. Have a great day. Laney's going to be back at some point. The star of the show here. We miss her very much. Emacs, a superstition. Best 70 songs. Stevie Wonder. I wish. Tough to argue that stuff. Well, you had a good day too. Drop off flight sports. Bob Kennedy. See you at 3. Talk to you at 3. Scratching my nose at nine. Bye.